Some of our vegetable garden plants require pollination to give us the harvest we want, while others require no pollination at all. For those that require pollination, insects are often involved, and those pollinators can lead to cross-pollination. It worries many gardeners. Me? Today? This year? This garden? I'm not at all worried about cross-pollination for my harvest this year. Join me today as I explain why and help you understand cross-pollination. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and pollination is happening all around me, all throughout my garden, all throughout the growing season. Pollination is simply the transfer of pollen within flowers. The male pollen from the anther is distributed to the female part of the plant, the stigma. And when the male reaches the stigma, you can expect that fertilization is going to result. That fertilization will lead to fruit and seeds, and that's how the plants reproduce. But not every plant needs to be pollinated within our vegetable garden. I'm growing these Swiss chard plants to harvest the leaves and the stalks, not flowers or fruit or seed. The same with these onions. They don't need to be pollinated for me to harvest the bulbs and the leaves. This garlic was in the ground for more than nine months. I just recently harvested. There was no pollination that happened at all in the entire life cycle of this plant. For the plants where you're going to be harvesting the leaves and the stalks and the roots within the same season, pollination is a non-issue. But for the plants where you're going to be harvesting the fruit, that becomes the point that pollinization plays a big role in your garden. The fruit requires that male pollen to be transferred to the female part of the plant. It requires fertilization for the fruit to develop, like on these pumpkin and squash plants and on these pepper plants. Because we need the flowers pollinated to get the fruit, all of our fruiting plants, like these tomatoes, need that transfer of the male pollen. But the mechanism for transfer and the flowers themselves will vary between plants. On this tomato, these flowers are what are called perfect flowers. Within each individual flower are the male parts and the female parts. So this plant is self-pollinating. Each of these flowers requires no help from any other flower to produce fruit. These cucumber plants are also self-pollinating, meaning that on a single plant, the male pollen can be transferred to a female flower and produce fruit. But cucumbers are different than the perfect flower plants, like the tomatoes and the peppers and eggplants. On a cucumber, it's a monoecious plant, which means there are male flowers and separate and distinct female flowers. And so in this case, even though it can happen on the same plant, we need a transfer of the male pollen from a male flower to the female flower to produce fruit. You may also have a completely different type of plant in your garden. Plants that are dioecious. In this case, the whole plant is male or the whole plant is female. Asparagus is a good example of this. Right here, I have these little berries that are showing up. These are the seed pods for this asparagus. This is a female plant. All of the other plants in this bed are male asparagus plants. Now, I'm not harvesting any fruit or seeds from these plants. So again, cross-pollination doesn't matter to me. But if I did want to save seeds of asparagus, I would need to make sure that I had male plants and female plants for the pollinization to happen. And it's that transfer from one plant to another plant that defines 
cross-pollination. These pumpkin plants are also monoecious. On the same plant, we have male flowers and female flowers. If a bee goes from a male flower to a female flower on the same plant and pollinates it, that is not cross-pollination. It's happening on the same plant. But if a bee goes from that pumpkin plant to this pumpkin plant, now it's cross-pollinating. There's nothing inherently bad about cross-pollinating. It's nature's way of helping to ensure that the flowers are pollinated. If you've got multiple plants in the same species and the pollinators are flitting from plant to plant, the fruit can be pollinated, it will grow, and that reproduction will happen. That's what the plant wants. It's when we get the pollination from one plant to another plant that are not the same. Pumpkin to pumpkin, no big deal. But this yellow squash right here is close enough to that pumpkin as far as the species is concerned that we could have these squash flowers pollinate the pumpkin flowers and vice versa. But even with that as a possibility, I'm not worried about this yellow squash or that yellow squash or any of this yellow squash being cross-pollinated from the pumpkins just a few feet away. Cross-pollination is only a concern if you're worried about propagating your plants. If you want to save the seeds, then the cross-pollinating could be an issue. But for the fruit itself in this year, it has no impact on that plant and that fruit at all. That yellow squash is a yellow squash. Genetically, as soon as the plant started growing, it was going to produce yellow squash. It doesn't matter if it's pollinated from another squash plant or the same squash plant, it's going to produce the same yellow squash. One of the big reasons cross-pollinating is such an issue for so many gardeners is not understanding that concept. This year, all of the fruit that you're growing will be produced by the plant that is growing this year. And cross-pollination won't affect the flavor, the size, the color, or anything about the fruit. But there's a lot of misinformation out there and lots of stories about people who planted two different types of plants together and the fruit turned out weird. It had nothing to do with cross-pollination. In this bed, I have half a dozen different types of pepper plants, sweet peppers and hot peppers. And I'm not at all worried that the hot peppers are going to make the sweet peppers taste hot. It doesn't work that way. If your sweet peppers taste hot, it's probably environmental. It was probably too hot, too dry, too windy, not enough water. That's what affects the flavor of the plants. Now, if these pepper plants are cross-pollinated and I save the seed, next year I could possibly have what looks like a sweet pepper that tastes like a hot pepper. So that's why I'm growing these New England sweet pumpkins right next to the jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. I'm going to make pie out of these sweet pumpkins. And the other pumpkins that aren't as sweet won't affect the flavor at all of these pumpkins. These are a small pumpkin. By being a small pumpkin, it's not going to make my jack-o'-lantern pumpkins any smaller. But if I save the seeds of these plants next year, there's no telling what kind of plant I'm going to get. When one variety of plant is cross-pollinated by another variety of plant in the same species, a hybrid develops. And many of the plants we grow in our garden ended up being a hybrid that was cultivated because of the properties that it had, and now we grow them in our garden. You can do this intentionally. You can cross-pollinate plants and try to arrive at your own hybrid. Within this year, 
If you're not saving the seed, then you don't have to worry about hybrids at all. You just harvest your plants. Now, getting back to the types of flowers, it's also important when you do want to save your seeds. These tomatoes, remember, have a perfect flower. The male and the female parts are right here, right in this flower. Now, believe it or not, the tomato flowers aren't that enticing to most pollinators. So most of these tomato flowers are going to pollinate themselves. So I've got 12 different varieties of tomatoes right here because of how the tomato flower is pollinated. Not likely by insects, most likely by themselves, I will go ahead and save the seeds of these tomatoes and not worry about a hybrid developing. Worst case, it can happen. The resulting fruit next year is going to be different, but that may not be a bad thing. I may have discovered a new type of tomato that I really like. It's helpful to understand the biology of plants and how flowers work. These eggplants are in the same family as the tomatoes, just a few feet away. They're both nightshade plants, but zero possibility that the tomatoes are going to cross-pollinate these eggplants and vice versa. So I can grow them close together with no issues and go ahead and save the seeds if I want to. It's plants in the same species that can cross-pollinate each other. The tomatillos and the tomatoes growing in this trellis are different species. I'm not worried about cross-pollination. But the different types of squashes that I'm growing could cross-pollinate each other. And the different types of melons could cross-pollinate each other. They're within the same species. Now, it's possible that different species can cross-pollinate and produce offspring. But in almost all cases, that offspring will be sterile. You won't be able to continue propagation using those seeds. Highly unlikely, but most importantly, in this year, it's not going to affect the taste, the flavor, the size, or the color of the fruit that you're growing. But no doubt you've heard the stories of that cucumber that just had some weird shape and it was planted right next to a squash. Or a squash that came out not tasting right or looking right and it was planted next to a melon. Most of the reasons are environmental. These cucumbers, I want that nice big long green cucumber, but for that to happen, every single one of those seeds needs to be fertilized. The pollen transfer to the female flower. If that doesn't happen, if even some of those seeds are not fertilized, then the fruit's not going to form. The plant is only going to form the fruit to support the seeds in it. So if all of these seeds are not fertilized, then the plant's going to be misshapen because it's going to grow to support the seeds on this end, not this end. Fertilization could be a big issue in the misshapen plants. It could also be bad seed that you got from saving the seeds yourself or possibly from a nursery. It's happened to all of us. You're expecting a certain plant to grow, but what you get doesn't look that way. It's not because of the cross-pollination. It could be just because of the bad seed. There are some things you can do to reduce or even eliminate the risk of cross-pollination. The first being exclusion. Only grow one type of plant. If you want to save squash seeds for next year, only grow the type of squash plant that you want to grow. And this holds true with all of the fruiting plants. If there isn't another variety to cross-pollinate it, it's not going to happen and those seeds will be pure. You can also put some type of barrier over the plants. Like with these hoops, just put row fabric cover over plants to avoid that potential cross-pollination. And hand pollinate the plants that you want to save the seeds from. It's more work, but it's one way that you can do it. I like succession planting, planting the different varieties at different times. So early in the season, 
I might plant and grow a pickling cucumber. That's the only type of cucumber I'm growing at that time. As those plants begin flowering and fruiting, I can save the seeds of those fruit and get the same plant next year. And then later in the season, I'll grow a different type of cucumber, like a slicing cucumber. Those first cucumbers have already been pollinated and the fruits developing. And now the other cucumbers are exclusive. They're not going to be cross-pollinated by the covered cucumbers. But as I said in the beginning, I'm not worried about cross-pollinating at all in this garden because of those measures I'm taking to prevent some of the issues when I want to save seeds, because of the type of flowers that should give me true seeds, and because of the plants that I just don't care about because I'm not harvesting the fruit or I don't care if next year the seeds would develop into a hybrid. I have other videos where I talk much more about hand pollinating and flowers and fruit and harvest. And if you're interested, go ahead and click on one of these next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.